when you look at Genie, right? Genie just came out with a Genie API, and I think we've been working with Genie for some time now. Yep. What are some of the practical examples uh, or practical use cases that you've seen that you can talk about in terms of Genie? And let's let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Genie in general, like from a, from the start, we thought it has been a great idea and a, and a great solution to a real a real customer problem that exists that that Databricks attempts to solve with just where with that whole self service reporting uh, view. Because uh, even one of our you know earlier engagements as Zeb as a company, one of the the the, the their like large enterprises, what we just generally see is that their reporting volume and their reporting workloads itself uh, have been their requests are very customized and they have no other solution but to build like you know these canned reports against each of them and that requires an experienced data analyst who's very familiar with the data and understands you know the operational side of the business too who can then help translate that question and that request into that report and for the scale and volume in which these businesses operate that that life cycle that ecosystem is just not sustainable at all anymore in this environment and so with Genie, I think that just solves a really core problem there by dem democratizing the ability of who can ask questions on and on what data and who can actually make these data driven decisions without the need of a middleman. It can go from operational user to directly to the uh, to the, the to work with the data itself without that data analyst in the middle having to deal with the workload and that that offloads tends to offload work that the data analysts can focus on more importantly, that's more business critical, mission oriented for the company that really inquires their attention. So just in general, this we, we believe that you know Genie is talking and solving a very critical problem that it, that is necessary in the space. With the Genie API, I think that's taken all of this to like the the next, you know, uh, level, so to speak, with the ability to I, I mean, you're not going to have that many non-technical operational users work in the Databricks workspace directly. It's just not going to happen. That's And that's what we started to see as a friction point from where the solution could scale with our customers directly. They wanted something that would work in their existing ecosystem or their existing environment, like a Slack channel or, you know, or Teams or whatever way they communicate and to just serve those self-service reporting analytics directly within that platform. We've even seen customers try to integrate, you know, this self-service reporting ability within their own products and their own services and, you know, things that they offer as a company. And that Genie API opens like a world of possibilities to pretty much accept all of this to happen uh, within e any of these different environments. And that's exactly how we're starting to implement that too with, with the customers we're, work we're working with. One of the use cases that like more interestingly that we've like specifically targeted was uh, we, we've been working, uh, we've been seeing a lot more need for uh, having an easy way to understand, you know, latest like security based information and, you know, have the like security based incidents get triaged quickly. So these uh, end security engineers and can just ask really quick questions on the different logs and metrics that they have accumulated on their like different in infrastructure competence and then get back at answers towards that. We saw, well, if Genie could be applied for different operational data, what's the big difference between, you know, pulling in security data that's coming in off of these, you know, infrastructure logs and then, you know, keep that within Databricks and then have Genie working off of that. And so that's basically what we built. And I, I can even share my screen and show an example of that. Yeah. Like we even have an example of how we use Genie in a, in a real time use case with that like security based example that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, we can go into like a Slack environment and we, we basically brought using the Genie API, we brought Z Genie as a, as a Slack bot. So different, like different users, even if they're operational users or non-technical can come in and just ask questions like, you know, uh, they can ask questions about, you know, the recent vulnerabilities that have been resolved and Genie would come back, uh, Genie would start, you know, working on the question. And then a, a few short seconds, we'll come back with an answer that's working off of the data that's present in the data warehouse about uh, that has all that information, like the, all the log data uh, 
and infrastructure competence talked about and then pull back a, an actual result. Yeah. So we've been, we've been even, uh, even through like uh, the Unity catalog functions, we were able to then also like let Genie know about specific op- uh, business metrics that are, are relevant to our use case. So it's able to provide uh, those details on those as well. That's for, that's so pretty awesome, actually. That's very very awesome. Yeah. And, and I I love the use case around security, right? Security is one of those things that everyone likes to talk about, and honestly, one of the areas that tends to be underinvested overall by companies. So, so perhaps hopefully this produces a little bit of a of of. Uh, give some additional capabilities to businesses that perhaps cannot afford like the full suit of uh, of security uh, team experts, right? That, that a lot of organizations truly need. So, yeah, absolutely. That's why we felt like such a tar- a targeted use case around that and being able to really leverage self-service analytics when <laughs> who would want to look at like thousands of logs data to pull the insight from this uh, just doesn't seem scalable. Uh, we, we felt that, that this is absolutely an opportunity to look at that data a little bit easier. It's awesome. Very, very cool stuff. We even have the ability to ask questions about, you know, which errors that have occurred re- repeatedly. So it has the context of like finding patterns within the underlying data itself and then, you know, pull, be able to pull uh, in- insight based on those kind of questions as well. So it even like looks looks into like specific detail of you know the different issues that have been faced, and also like their their descriptions, and then through that it's able to generate some insight who's faced some of those issues, why they faced it, some of the remediation strategies that we could do as well to help fix these issues or what their what their root causes could be, and we can even drill down further with Genie and ask further questions on this. Uh, and then this is the part I was talking about on like specific metrics that that we that we can give Genie context on on how to calculate. So things like the average mean time to detect uh, an issue and how how to get to that calculation is something that through Unity Catalog we've given in uh, Genie that context, and it's like leveraging the leveraging that information to help perform that calculation. I see so much potential too around things such as like SOC 2 and all this other security compliance stuff where honestly, there's just so much paperwork, so much stuff, so many things that you got to implement. And honestly, those things are a little bit daunting and I can see the potential where this helps. Obviously, it's still a lot of work, but this helps cut down the amount of work uh, uh, in, in some ways to make sense of, of, of it all. So. Exactly. And you can just directly like copy, you can, an executive level person can come in and understand a little bit more about their landscape and ask more like pointed questions to their security team, even with the insight that's being leveraged here, right? And it's really just that ability to democratize the, the understanding of data itself to, to non technical to business level users who just want to who care just as much about these issues. Yeah. Yeah, make, um, I always think of the analogy as to where does your AI fit in, uh, where does your AI fit in your hierarchy, and this puts in that, you know, analytical, uh, uh, you know, like that analyst that's helping retrieve the data for you. Now, what do you see as some of the challenges, right, when you're working with Genie? Uh, what have you perhaps seen historically, and how has it improved, and where are some of the areas that you still can I see room for improvement on? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And we initially, we when we see, saw Genie and we just understood that it's like with the, with how complex this use case really is, uh, we, we initially saw that Genie would struggle sometimes when we ask like super, you know, business specific, organized specific based questions that it just as a general solution wouldn't have context on. But I think Databricks has really given uh, over time, we've given a lot more configurability, a lot more power into like the the developer who's configuring the Genie app bot itself and been able to help us feed a little bit more context and tell Genie and uh, 
examples of what's like of of insight in the past and the different questions it should think about when it when it then uh, in the next time it receives an actual request. So we've seen that like the amount of uh, empowering that a the amount of control a user has over what Genie can do now has really increased. And so that's just generally been been something great and something we would like to continue seeing in the future as well. The, I think a few of the, some of the challenges that, that we face are some of the, like, I wouldn't say challenges, more like we think is ob the obvious next, you know, it's hard always to guess kind of what Databricks' roadmap is going to look like, but some of the immediate get, uh, things, steps that we think uh, can happen with the Genie API is directly break bring the AI BI visualizations that they have working on the, the that the bot does on the tool itself uh, through through the API as well. And then we've also, it's like, that's one e easy room for opportunity. And one thing we think is a little bit farther out there, but we still see a huge potential is if we can start bringing in like auto ML models within Genie to how, help it like basically like create the training data set for the model based on the question that's being asked and then predict or, you know, whatever that, that use case, that modeling use case looks like. So I think that would be something really cool. Maybe I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, but but that's something that, that well, you, you can one, one can only dream, right? Like, whoa, whoa, here's, here's, here's my bucket list of things to do. Um, you, uh, mosaic framework, mosaic mosaic. I, I honestly don't know how to say it right, but mosaic framework. What are some of the first of what is the business value that you see into the way that Databricks enables customers with it? Second, 